screen going. Okay. It's going, so you're good to go. Okay. I would like to call the meeting of the St. Louis County Board of Zoning Adjustment to order. The board members present today are Angelia Bills Chair and Justin Randall, Vice Chair. The Department of Planning staff members present today are Debbie Nesbitt, Abby Freudel, and Gretchen Arnold. Also on the call is John Burford from the County Counselor's Office. First, I'd like to offer into the record the affidavit of publication pertaining to today's meeting. Oh, I hope this is, this is, is April 3rd, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, be 17th. Yeah, yeah. Today's the 17th. The third would have been your last meeting. Okay, so I can just change that in here. Okay. First, I'd like to offer into the record the affidavit of publication pertaining to today's meeting, April 17, 2024. The board hereby takes official notice of and admits into evidence on the record the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance, Chapter 1003, St. Louis County Revised Ordinance, 1974 as amended and chapter 1004 St. Louis County Revised Ordinance 1974 as amended. Next, I would like to call for a motion to approve the minutes of the previous BZA meeting of April 3rd, 2024. I move to approve the minutes. And I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the motion passes. This meeting is conducted as a teleconference and is recorded. The planning staff will read each request into the record and present technical advice to the board if needed. The petitioner will be unmuted, state their name, and make a brief presentation to the board explaining the reason and hardship for the requested variance. The board will not consider financial hardships. Board members may ask questions to clarify the facts. When the board is satisfied with the material presented, their chairperson will then ask if there is anyone in favor or opposition to the request. To do so, click the hand next to your name. If any comments were submitted, staff will read them into the record. Before a call for the vote, the petitioner may request a continuance in order to bring in additional documentation. The board may also request a continuance to gather additional information or for a visit to the site. Once comments have been heard, the chairperson will call for a vote. At that time, the discussion is ended and no further discussion is permitted. The board will generally make a decision today. If a variance is approved, the petitioner has six months to obtain the necessary permits or establish the use requested, or the variance will expire. The petitioner or any interested party has the right of appeal to the St. Louis County Circuit Court. Paperwork indicating the board's decision will be mailed to the petitioners. And just for the record, you do now have a full board, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. The first petition today is 31-24 Michael and Diane Holt. Um, this is a request for an exception to the rear yard regulations for the purpose of constructing a deck and stairs at 4916 Carrington Place Court, maintaining a rear yard of 10 feet in lieu of 15 feet as required by the R4 Residence District Regulations of St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance. Mark Doring, I'm going to request for you to unmute. How about now? Yep, I got you, Mark. You're good. Great. Good afternoon. I'm Mark Doring, President of Doring Engineering, and next to me is Mike Aholt. Mike is the owner of the subject property. Uh, Mike and his wife bought this property about 28 years ago and resided there ever since. As you can see on the aerial photo, we are a corner lot. And what happens often on corner lots is um, you're, you're, you pick your rear yard and um, on a corner lot like this one here, you can see the rear yard is um, pretty small, okay? So to get a, a decent sized lot that fits the neighborhood, a decent sized deck that fits the neighborhood, we're requesting to go to just under 11 foot on the setback in lieu of the 15 foot rear yard. Um, we have um, talked to the eight neighbors that are closest and may even see the deck. And we've submitted letters from each of those eight neighbors saying that they are okay with our request. Um, the deck will be about four to five feet off the ground made out of just quality materials because Mike and his wife want it to be nice like they've always had things at that property. Um, and uh, I don't think 
Well, with, with that, I guess if you have any questions of Mike and myself, we'd be happy to ask them and we appreciate your consideration. Okay. And uh, I would ask uh, the use of the deck, would that be um, to have an adequate rear entry to the home? Yeah, it'll, it'll help us with it. Yeah, right now they still have, um, they don't have any deck there to the to the entry of the door, correct? Mm -hmm. Can, can we go back to the site plan, if you don't mind, or at least the, uh, the layout? Yeah. So I'm just trying to get re relationship. So the deck would extend out roughly to the stair in that line, in the red line. Yes. Yeah, so what you're seeing, you're, the red line is where they're uh, proposing that about 11 feet. And then the green line is what is is that that 15 foot, which is the normal setback. Okay. So it would cover the padded area that we're seeing in the photo, essentially. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And is the side yard setback six feet? Yes. Okay. I don't have any further questions. No further questions as well. Okay. And there's a, there is a house behind you all. Yes, and we got a letter from them and they are fine with our request. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone here in favor of opposition? I don't see any hands. So at this time, I'm gonna mute the petitioner's representative so the board can take a vote. This is 31-24. Okay, in the matter of 31-24, I vote to approve the variance as advertised and the hardship being that the need for a rear exit for the home. Second that motion. Okay, all those in favor, favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the motion passes. Gretchen, you are currently muted. Thank you. It was gonna happen at some point this today, guys. Um, 32 24 Frederick Rodstack Jr. is a request for an exception to the side yard regulations for the purpose of repairing a deck at 4642 Cyber Avenue, maintaining a side yard of three feet in lieu of five feet as required by the R5 residence district regulations of the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance. And then I'm going to request for you to unmute Frederick. And again, on your phone, it's going to come up as like star eight. Can you hear me? Yep, we got you. Just state your name for the record and then you can present to the board. Uh, Frederick F. Rostick Jr. Uh, in November, we purchased a house that had been rehabbed uh, inside and out. Uh, they had redone the deck and redone a retaining wall. Um, we found out uh, when we were getting ready to um, Move in that there was a notice on our door uh, that the uh, back deck was uh, a foot and eight inches too close to the, the property line. And uh, for us to cut it down uh, uh, for just that little bit would be. Uh, kind of a pain for us. I'm 71, my girlfriend is uh, 62, so we're not the youngest people in the world. Um, there's a fence on the other side of the deck uh, that gives space to walk between the deck and the fence, uh, but it, it just, uh, we've been told that we have to cut that section off and we're asking that we won't have to cut that section off. Just to clarify, uh, was the deck included when you purchased the home or was this? Yes, it was. And then we, we found out later that it had been built without a permit. Mm. 
and uh, we've uh, we've had to deal with a lot of issues uh, with the permits uh, for the house because a lot of them were done without permits. They found that they everybody had to come back to inspect all the work that they had done and finally got the permits so that we could get an occupancy permit. So we weren't we didn't actually build the the deck ourselves. Can we go back to the site plan? I'm just trying to see what the lot and it's a very narrow lot. To start with. Is there I'll put it back. Or? I'll put it back on the aerial so you got it's a little bit easier to see yeah. um, where that like red vehicle is. That's where that deck is basically on this site. I was hoping to find some sort of dimension, but I couldn't read it on the. Yeah. It, it's. Uh, from the property line, it's three feet four inches. Hoping to have it. I have no idea of how no. that lot yeah. seems extremely narrow. Mm -hmm. I don't have any questions, Angelia. Okay. No, no questions. I. I was just hoping to find the distance. It, it just seems like a very extremely narrow lot. It's a tight lot, yeah. Okay. And what would you say would be your hardship, sir? Uh, uh, just to get the uh, work done and get us, uh, get it. We're trying to put the house up for sale and to get the work done before it gets permitted uh, would be a true pain, to be honest, because uh, we've had to get some other work done and it's taking us months to get our permits through. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so is there anyone here in favor or opposition? I don't see any hands at this time, so I'm going to mute the petitioner. This is 32-24. The matter of 32-24, based on the um, existing lot size and width of that lot, um, I would recommend approval of the variance. Second that. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. None opposed. The motion carries. All right, moving on to 33-24, Greg and Diane Schweitzer is a request for an exception to those side and rear yard regulations for the purpose of constructing a retaining wall and fence at 5801 West Cliff Drive, maintaining both side yards of zero feet in lieu of six feet and a rear yard of 10 feet in lieu of 15 feet as required by the R6 Residence District Regulations of the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance and PEU Ordinance 11,608. Greg, I'm going to request for you to unmute at this time. And then just state your name for the record and then you'll be able to proceed. Yeah, I'm Greg Schweitzer, 5801 West Cliff Drive. Um, we had to have our retaining wall and fence replaced. This goes back to, I think, like October of 2022. Uh, we've been, I, uh, our neighbor behind me told me that our fence was falling. It was behind a large, um, um, bunch of uh, ornamental grass so when i looked at it the whole fence was falling down it was on a railroad uh, the old railroad tie type of retaining wall that we had built like 30 plus years ago and uh, so we had to have it replaced they've got a little one two dogs he didn't complain to me he just told me i could i couldn't see it until i went back and looked at it um so we had a company come in and put in the we had to go to the cinder, not cinder block, but the cement block. Uh, our two neighbors have a real nice looking more wall. I don't even see it. So you can see in that picture, the back left hand side um, uh, of the yard is the part that was falling down. When I went into that neighbor's yard, all of the wood had rotted out, dirt was coming out. We had to get it done as quickly as we could because of that reason. And this was uh, getting ready to have all of the, the weather changes and everything. So I didn't want to endanger him, but the whole wall had to be replaced. It was just replacing what was already there. So that's basically it. Okay. So basically just a need for an upgrade. Correct. Yeah. 
and and bringing it up because I know you can't do a a tile wall with wood anymore. Um, mm -hmm. At that, it was I think it was right at three feet. So we went to the and it, you know it cost us twelve thousand. The wall is already done. That's that's the issue. Uh, when I was told about. The permitting and everything I got, you know, my neighbors, they all agreed. They signed all those papers. Uh, we sent the plan, we sent everything and, and all of the, the easement things and everything that was uh, the easement releases from all the utilities and everything. Okay. I was just trying to clarify again, maybe I missed it. The, the hardship for you on this is, is what? Well, the, the fence was falling down from erosion. Because there's a there's a hill behind it, um, and uh, that's why we had the retaining wall built thirty some odd years ago, the original one. Um, initially, behind us was all trees, and then when they graded for this neighborhood that's there now, that's when my fence started falling. So that's when I had the that tie wall built. I guess it's been about thirty five years ago. Yeah. Okay. Are there any other questions? I don't have any questions. Okay. It looks like a pretty, I, I actually, so I do have one. It looks like that neighborhood behind you sits quite a bit further below you, right? Is that correct? Right? Yes. If you, if you were to measure from my neighbor, uh, the house to the left, as you see my box there, where the arrow, where, where your arrow is, where the cursor is. Uh -huh. um, I measured there to the top of my fence and it's like nine feet because it's a six foot at the highest point of the fence. The fence is like camelback. So it's about nine feet back there. To me, it's not even six feet. It's just just at six feet, I should say, in my end of the yard. So yeah, it is it is a considerable drop there. I'll have any further questions. And the and the other the other uh there's another neighbor to the right of that house. They have the same thing. Okay. Okay. Is is there anyone here in favor or opposition? I don't see any hands. So at this time, I'm going to mute the petitioner so the board can take a vote. This is 33-24. In the uh, case of 33-24, I make a motion to approve the variance noting a safety concern with the topography of the existing land. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the motion passes. All right, moving on to 34-24, Madison and Caleb King is a request for an exception to the front and rear yard regulations for the purpose of constructing an in-ground swimming pool, retaining wall slash fence and pool equipment at 6935 Meadow Haven Lane, maintaining a front yard of eight feet in lieu of 20 feet along Haven Lane, maintaining a front yard of eight feet in lieu of 20 feet along Meadow Haven Court for the retaining wall and fence, and a rear yard of 10 feet for the pool, five feet for the pool equipment, and one foot for the retaining wall slash fence in lieu of 15 feet as required by the R2 Residence District Regulations and the Density Development Procedure of the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance. Tom, I'm gonna to request for you to unmute at this time. Again, just please state your name for the record and then feel free to start your presentation. My name's Thomas Young, and I'm with Just. Um, we are uh, trying to put a pool in for the King residents. Um, they purchased this house. It's a newer subdivision. Uh, their lot, I'm going to tell you, is a fairly nice lot. It's a corner lot. Um, talking to the homeowners, um, I don't know if we can zoom in. You can kind of see on that lot there. There's also photos I submitted. Uh, we'd like to run the pool on that half of the yard to try to save the other half of the yard for future uh, family, you know, like kids, swing set, things like that. That upper side of the yard is also a hill, so you can see there's a upper retaining wall that has been engineered for the plans. Uh, there's an equipment bump out back there, and then there's a lower retaining wall. Um, the residents directly behind them, I can see that photo now. I do have a letter. I did not get it submitted. I don't know if you guys see me. I don't have the video, but I have a letter from them just stating uh, we have no concerns and provide our uh, consent for the pool and retaining wall construction at 6935 Meadow Haven. 
and then uh, the wife and the husband have signed it. Uh, I'm not a good cursor reader, but I guess it's McC McClay, I guess, is their last name at that residence there. Uh, but you can see the contour. We're going to have this grass area on the upper side is going to stay. That way they have room to play soccer and have swing set for future kids. And then the lower side is going to be the pool area. Um, when I originally sold it to them on this plot drawing, there's only an eight foot setback on the back side against that neighbor. Uh, when I applied for the permit, that's when they're telling me there's a 15 foot. Uh, so the plot drawing was wrong when I did sell the pool. Uh, the pool is 10 foot off. So originally I was thought I was fine with that setback. Um, but after applying, they said, no, the plot's wrong. We have to do 15. Um, so that's why we're here for the pool. Uh, the retaining wall obviously has to go around the pool. Uh, there is some fall to that corner, um, but I don't see any, I mean, there's at least 15 foot between the fence and that neighbor's house. I mean, we're not really encroaching on their privacy or anything. Uh, on top of that wall, there's gonna be a planter area with shrubs. Uh, I think it's going to be a good look. I wanted to ask if I didn't think it'd get approved or, you know, think it would work. Uh, so, yeah, that's pretty much my presentation. So, does this house have two front yards? Is that, is it a corner it, lot? Yes, it is. It's a corner lot. And the, the house directly across the street on the other corner has a swimming pool as well. I think I turned in some some pictures of that one. I thought I did. Okay. Let me go back to the site plan. Yeah. Can you confirm for me where you're anticipating having the pool equipment at? Uh, the back corner. Uh, so it'd be, you see a red line on the drawing. It's on the right side of that red line. There's a bump out there for the retaining wall. It actually bumps back five foot and is 10 foot wide right there. So it's going to be a, a, you know, it's not just out in the open. It's, it's backed into that wall there. Okay. And is there a neighbor behind, behind this house? That is the neighbor, yeah, that gave us permission. That's the same neighbor. Uh, and again, that property line from her garage, see their living space on that house is on the other side. Um, again, from that back property line where I'm asking for five foot for my equipment, I'm at least 15 feet from their garage. You know, that puts it 30 feet from their house. You know what I'm saying? So noise wise, again, I have a letter from them. They're okay with what we have presented. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think there's an issue. Okay. Um, so what is the stated hardship for, for it being over there? The hardship as far as why is it pushed over here? Mm -hmm. Why are we putting it in that location? Yeah. Uh, it's either that, uh, that is going to be more hidden from the street because of the landscaping area. If we go over here on the side of the house, uh, we have an easement right here that we're real close to. I don't even know if we could. Um, I think there might be five foot to that easement line, uh, but you're going to have equipment right on the side of that house, you know, that would really be the only other location. There is a back door uh, coming off of the house, you know, out to the pool equipment. Uh, nobody wants the equipment right up next to the house here tucked in. And you want it kind of out of sight, out of mind. You know, they are an eyesore. I'm not going to lie to you. Who wants to see pool equipment? You know, their plan was to, I, I only need four foot. It's a five foot setback. Their plan was to put a small white privacy, you know, a little three foot or four foot privacy thing to hide it there you know but again in my opinion it's kind of tucked back that's that's one of the best spots for it if we tried to go to the right side again all that's uphill i don't like to pump more water more than two foot above or below the pool you want to keep that pump level so that way you get the best efficiency you know the longest life out of that pump um, so if we tried to come around the other side of the house, we're going to be pulling water four foot uphill, 50 foot away. You know, it's, it's just not going to work. Okay. 
Okay. Are there any, are there any other questions? No other questions. I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone here in favor or opposition? I don't see anybody. I know there was a neighbor, but I told them if they had. Oh, here we go. There we go. Give me mm -hmm. one second. I'm going to put the petitioners are up on mute so we can hear from the neighbor. Okay. Mark, I'm going to request for you to unmute. Then just state your name for the record yeah. before you yeah. speak. Thank you. Yeah, my name is Mark Sarhagi. I'm uh, one of the adjacent neighbors and the HOA president. I just wanted to say that I'm in favor of this uh, variance request. Thank you. All right, well, I'll put them back on mute. Mm -hmm. Other than that, that there, there was nobody else. Okay. And what number is this? Uh, this is thirty-four dash twenty-four. Okay. Uh, in the matter of thirty-four dash twenty-four, I vote to approve the variance as advertised. The hardship being that they have two front yards and some other things going on, but I vote to approve the variance. I'll second the motion. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Okay. The motion carries. All right. Um, I, Debbie, are we presenting this case or no? Not that I know of, no. Do we know the name of the property owner? Because I did not have anybody check in for this petition. If you are the representative or property owner for um, this site, if you could raise your hand next to your name, um, just so we know who you are. I think his name was Raymond. Okay. Um, I don't see anybody of that name. Yes, Raymond was, was okay. the name. Um, so, if the board pleases, um, we could just move this to the end if we can get a motion for that, and then if we'll see if anybody pops on between now and then. It is very straightforward, so I would be comfortable to represent them to explain what he wants to do there, if the board would allow. Yeah. Um, let's let's do this. I, I'll make a motion to move this to the end of uh, 35 dash 24 to the end of the agenda and then we can have that discussion afterwards Debbie if you when we get back to it if there's still no way there. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can care. All right. So we got that was a 30 vote. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um all right. So we're going to move on to 36 dash 24 orphan 2 LLC. This is a request for an exception to the side yard regulations for the purpose of constructing a deck and porch at 315 and 317 Sigsby Avenue, maintaining a side yard of zero feet in lieu of five feet as required by the R5 residence district regulations of the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance. Brian, I'm going to request for you to unmute. Again, just state your name for the record and then feel free to start your presentation. All right. Can everyone hear me? Yeah, yeah. you're good. All right. Uh, my name is Brian Potter. I'm the owner of Roof STL. I'm representing Peter Orphan, Orphan 2 LLC uh, as the property owner. Uh, I was called in. Uh, the The deck is currently there. Uh, it, uh, I guess, permits weren't uh, weren't uh, uh, permits weren't acquired when they they built this deck. Uh, the deck is built over the original concrete porch, uh, which also uh, had the zero setback. Uh, so, uh, so I'm asking for a variance, uh, based, I guess my hardship on this is, uh, this is a multifamily unit. Uh, it has 2 main entrances, uh, to, to separate units. Uh, so, uh, an entrance on the 317 side only goes to certain units and an entrance on the 315 side only goes to certain units. Uh, the 315 side is where, uh, this deck is constructed. Uh, you can see in the picture, it's right on the property line, uh, but without uh, this access, uh, this kills all access to all units on this half of the building, aside from going through a downstairs basement. That's the other, uh, each side has a basement entrance also. Uh, so without this, there is no access into, I believe, five units in this uh, multifamily building. 
Uh, I do think we, uh, I believe we are approved for the current permit uh, to revamp this deck and bring it up to code. Uh, and I believe right now it's dependent on, on this variance, uh, whether we can get this adjustment approved or not. And I think that's all. Okay, so I see this is a pre-existing staircase and deck over here. It is. Okay. Which we do plan to, uh, we plan to, to for the most part, uh, renovate the entire deck. Uh, the, the framing of it, the, the subframe of it is uh, in good shape. It's, it's missing a few things to bring it up to code uh, brackets that are required now uh, that weren't put in, joist hangers mainly. Uh, things of that nature, but uh, but we plan on uh, on fully revamping it to to what it should be up to code. Uh, I've talked to the uh, the building inspector that's handling uh, the permit on it uh, personally uh, when he notified me of the, a few conditions that he had. Uh, I've already agreed to the conditions and resubmitted the new plans with the conditions and. Uh, he said I would be hearing from his office as far as permit fees and, and to come in and obtain the permit, but I assume that he's waiting to, for the outcome of this meeting here before uh, he does that. It's my understanding that this meeting is what everything is, is we'll come down to now. Okay. Are there any other questions? I don't have any. None. Okay. Is there anyone here in favor or opposition? I don't see any hands. So at this time, I'm going to mute the petitioner's representative so the board can take a vote. This is 36 24. In the matter of 36 24, based on the existing conditions, I uh, recommend uh, approval of the variance. I second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, not opposed. The motion carries. Thank you. All right, moving on to 37 24, Ameren, Missouri is a request for an exception to the off street parking and loading regulations for the purpose of maintaining an existing gravel drive in lieu of a paved drive at 1416 Fifi Road as required by the R3 Residence District regulations in section 1003. 0.165 off street parking and loading regulations of the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance and CUP 118, 118. Uh, Garrick and Ms. Woodard, I'm going to request for you both to unmute just because both of you are going to maybe need to answer some questions here. Um, just state your name before you start speaking and then feel free to start your presentation. Yes, can you hear me? Yep, we can yeah. hear you. Okay, this is Garrick Pitts. I'm a civil structural engineer with Ameren Transmission, working in this case at a uh, station located in Ameren, Missouri Territory. Uh, this is our uh, Mason substation located at 1416 Fifi Road. From our records, as far as I can tell, this station has been in existence at this address, originally off of old Fifi Road prior to the relocation since 1962. Uh, this existing gravel roadway, which is the sole ingress egress into our station here, has existed for at least 25 years. Uh, I have records that show it may have existed prior to that and likely did. That's just the one where I can uh, I can show the greatest amount of proof. Uh, we are requesting variants to. Uh, repave this as either a, uh, I believe is required to be concrete or asphalt bituminous pavement. Uh, we're requesting a variance on the grounds that this is an existing gravel drive that has been here for multiple decades. Um, we do not have a secondary ingress egress point into this site as required by the security regulations for substations of this type. And we have ongoing operational need to enter and exit the site regularly. Okay, um, so the, the gravel driveway that you all have, is it dust free or is it just a typical gravel? It's standard crushed rock gravel. 
because I believe at this right now, we actually require dust free gravel on surfaces. Correct? I'm asking the staff. Uh, let me see here. Abby, I don't know if you can grab a hold of it faster than me. Yes, that's correct. We don't permit regular gravel anywhere. Okay. Maybe I missed it, but what, what is the hardship for why we wouldn't be able to go through with an ask for a concrete road eval? This is associated with a building permit. Um, no improvements to this access road were included in the scope of the project. In addition to that, there's the ongoing operational needs to have personnel in and out of the site on a daily basis do it uh at this point so we are uh just requesting to leave it as is okay and you're saying that the only entrance and exit into this site how do we have an idea of how wide that road is? Is it two car lane road or one? Uh, the width is labeled on the site plan here. If you could zoom in there on the western edge. Mm, I don't think I can. Yeah. That's okay. It's uh, the label there. I have to squint a little bit, but it's existing 20 foot wide road. That is an, uh, minimum width. Obviously, you can see the throat of the road does open up once you get closer to the main gate of the substation. But the throat at the back of the paved entrance is 20 feet and it maintains that approximate width until widening near the gate. Garrick, the, it says on the plan chip and seal coat. So it's not actually rock. It does have some coating on it to prevent the dust, correct? That is not correct. Oh, okay. Um, as it exists today, this is a purely crushed rock gravel drive. What I was told by the planning department was that they would not accept this site plan if it did not include that note about chip and seal coat. I even asked them, you know, since this is not correct, do I still have to show this on the plan? And I was told unequivocally yes. Okay. That is the reason for the uh, conflict there. Okay. Okay. But that, so I guess for staff, if they were to do an oil and chip, does that meet the requirements of a dust free surface? Abby? <laughs> um, hang on. <laughs> It the, looks, the planning department seemed to think so. The Department of Transportation and Public Works recently updated that. So mm -hmm. it at one point was, but I want to check before I say 100%. Yeah, I'm looking at the one thing, Abby. I think it just really depends on the surf, like the surface type of treatment, really. And like the... Okay, because basically as it stands, it has to have something, some level of treatment on it, correct? Correct. So, so while we're looking for that, just to confirm, uh, I know we talked about a 20 foot dry vial. Um, so it is currently used as a two way road though, in and out. Is that correct or accurate? That is correct. Okay, so it has the potential to do a phased treatment of either gravel or concrete or asphalt without interrupting in and out traffic with some phasing. Okay. Chip and seal coat is permitted. Sorry, it takes my Adobe forever to open things when I'm on a, a meeting. But it is a permitted dustproof alternate surface. And 
if I may read from the zoning ordinance, um, it states that in all zoning districts, all parking and loading areas, including driveways, shall be paved with impervious or pervious pavement, except in the FP, PS, and UKP and R1 districts, where the Department of Highways and Traffic and the Department of Planning may approve an alternate dust proofing method um, of those, those uh, listed approved alternate dust proof methods. Since this is R3, um, that's why they have to request the variance for an alternate dust proof material. Thank you. So in this case, would we need to adjust our request for the alternate material? I was thinking as well on this, um, if the variance is solely for existing to remain or not. That's why I was looking for a clarification on that. The application was the way it was worded was for existing to remain as is. Okay. Okay. Are there any other questions? I don't have any right now. Okay. Is there anyone here in favor or opposition? I don't see anybody. So at this time I'm going to mute um, the petitioners representatives. This is 37 dash 24. Um, in the case of 37 dash 24, I make a motion to reject the variance pending um, the existing conditions uh, request with a future resubmittal. I second that. And I would say that they would, I don't know if we can say this on the motion or on the motion, but I would say that they can use the chip and seal method so the, for the pavement. I'm in agreement with that, yeah, pending that they'll change for it, use the alternate gravel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, but then they wouldn't need a variance, right? If they did the chip and seal, because that's an approved alternate, correct? Or am I? Yeah. Mistaken. The, the challenge for me, I'm sorry for you to get off subject, but the challenge for me is that the plat states that it's chip and seal. And that's mm -hmm. what with it. Okay. Yeah, okay. I think yeah. my understanding um, is that this is from what I kind of gathered from them, and Abby, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that the staff kind of said, hey, if you don't get this variance, the chip and seal would be the alternative that they'd have to go about getting. And so, so I think that's what they submitted, just knowing that that might be the case. Abby, do you have any insight on that since this was not my original site plan, so I'm not 100% sure. This site is zoned R3, and so the zoning ordinance doesn't permit a dustproof alternate method outright. They need the, the variance because of the zoning. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. To deny the variance. To deny the variance, but. It would need to come and ask for a separate variance for the chip and seal is what it's For sounds. the chip and seal. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's, a, that's what I would understand that to be. Okay. Okay, the motion is still on the floor. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, the motion carries. All right. Um, I'm going to move us back to 35-24, so give me just a minute here. Okay. Okay. If I don't see anybody by that first name, Debbie. So do you want to, I mean, I can do it after I read it through if you want me to, or if you want to be the presenter on it, I can, or however the board wants to go about this. Okay, go ahead and read it and I'll present it. Is that okay with the board? Yes. Okay. 35-24 Trusted Properties LLC is a request for an exception to the parking regulations for the purpose of enclosing an existing garage for living area, which will eliminate the required parking space behind the building line in 9736 Dennis Drive, as required by the R4 Residence District Regulations 
in Section 1003.165 off-street parking and loading requirements of the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance. Uh, this Debbie Nesbitt with the Planning Department. This is a um, an existing single-family residence, and the petitioner is asking to uh, enclose the garage for living space, which would put the parking space in front of the building line. That is the only variance requested, and um, because normally the parking space would be the garage space. So since he's turning it into a bedroom, then the car would be outside in the building, front building line. Okay. And what, what is their hardship? The need for um, extra living space in the home. Okay. In this, in this plan that's shown right here, the clouded area, is that a parking space currently that's being turned into a bedroom? I guess I'm trying to understand their Yes, that's, that's the garage area that they want to use, okay. return okay. into a bedroom. Okay. So is it currently a carport or a covered parking or just an open? I believe it's, it's an enclosed garage that was built oh, yeah, with a garage. home. Okay. No structural change to the house itself. No. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? I don't have any. Okay. And is there anyone here in favor or opposition? I don't see any hands. So at this time, you're good to take a vote on 35 24. Okay, uh, in a matter of 35-24, I vote to approve the variance as advertised. Second that motion. Okay, all those in favor, aye. Aye. Okay, the motion passes. And we need a motion to close the meeting. Well, actually, uh, Madam Chair, we have a little bit of news. So okay. Vince was just promoted to the Director of Project Management planning, design, and construction with BJC Healthcare. So just wanted to congratulate him on that promotion. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank Good you. to have an expert in the, on the board. <laughs> Much you. appreciated. Sure, sure. You're welcome. Congrats. And I'll see you. Oh, we got to do the motion now, right? Yep. And <laughs> also, if you guys are going to go out to um, Earth Day in St. Louis, come see us. The planning department will be out there talking about uh, St. Louis County 2050. Oh, cool. Okay. We'll look that up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so we're, we're going to motion to uh, adjourn the meeting. I will second that motion. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It passes. See you guys at Earth Day. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. Have a good day. All right.